Welcome. Let's read this problem. It says to find the area of the region described by 4x squared plus y squared minus 8x plus 4y plus 4 is less than 0. The essentials are in this case kind of the steps to work this problem. The first step is to identify the conic. This is a conic described up here. Is it a parabola? Well, let's see. If it was a parabola, one of the either the one of the variables would just have to be to degree one, and they're both to degree two, so it's not a parabola. A hyperbola, it might be a hyperbola. But no, we see that the, the signs are the same for both the x squared and the y squared. That rules it out being a hyperbola. How about a circle? Well, no. The, we have different coefficients for the x squared and the y squared, so it has to be an ellipse. So what we have here is an ellipse, and to put it in standard form, we need to know how to complete the square, and then put it in standard form, which looks like this, x minus h squared over a squared plus y minus k squared over b squared equals 1. We will also need to know how to graph a nonlinear inequality. That's a nonlinear inequality that we have up there. It's not linear because we have an x squared and a y squared term. We've discovered that it is an ellipse, and so we'll need to know the equation of an ellipse, which is a equals pi times a times b, where a times b are what are shown up there in the standard form for, for an ellipse. So you may be prepared right now to go ahead and put this in standard form. Go ahead and put it in standard form for an ellipse. Put it on pause. Welcome back. Let's see if you got this for your standard form. I come up with x minus 1 squared over 1 squared plus, let's see, I could write this as y minus a negative 2. You might have written it as y plus 2. That's fine. y minus a negative 2 squared makes it fit the standard form better. Over 2 squared is less than 1. If you got that, great. S jump ahead to the next step. Otherwise, let's go through this in detail. So the first step is we want to get the x terms together. So we're rewriting this as 4x squared minus 8x, and we also want to get the y terms together, plus y squared plus 4y. We want to move the constant term, that plus 4, over to the right side of the inequality, so it becomes a negative 4 over there. The next step is we want to factor a 4 out of both of our x terms. So we'll have 4 times x squared minus 2x, and then plus y squared plus 4y is less than negative 4. Next, it is time to do completing the square. So let's just rewrite and leave some room for completing the square. We'll need to do completing the square for both the x's and the y's. OK. And so now to do completing the square for the x's, we take the coefficient of the x term, which is 2, take half of it, which is 1, and square it. So we're going to add 1, but actually we're adding 4 times 1 to the left side of the inequality, so we'll have to add a 4 to the right side. To do completing the square with the y's, we'll take half of the 4 there, which is 2, square it which is 4, so we need to add another 4. OK, and now let's factor. So this, the x's factor to x minus 1 squared, and that y polynomial factors to y plus 2 squared, and that is less than, and what do we have, negative 4 plus 4 plus 4 is just 4. We want 
1 on the right side of the inequality. So we'll need to divide both sides of the inequality by 4 to make a 1 over there. And since 4 is positive, we'll just uh, keep the inequality symbol the same because we're dividing by a positive number. And simplifying, we get x minus 1 squared over 1 plus y plus 2 squared over 4 is less than, and 4 divided by 4 is the 1 that we wanted. And then we can rewrite this as uh, that 1 is 1 squared. The 4 we can rewrite as 2 squared. And y plus 2, we can rewrite that as y minus a negative 2, just to make it fit the form better the standard form. Let's go ahead and graph this. So we need to graph uh, first the center. And where is the center located? Well, the center is located at uh, 1 and negative 2. 1, negative 2. So we'll move to the right 1. The x value is 1. And we'll go down 2 since the y value is negative 2. And there's our center. Now this is oriented in a uh, vertical direction. The, the uh, main axis is going to be parallel to the y-axis. And so uh, our two vertices in our uh, one is 2 above and 2 below. So our vertices are at uh, 1, 0, and 1, negative 4. And then our other two points are 1 left and right of the center. And so our ellipse will look something like this. There's our ellipse. Now we have a linear or a nonlinear inequality. Do we shade on the inside or the outside of this? Well, let's pick a test point. And the center is just as good of a test point as any. So if I plug 1 in in place of x, and if I plug a negative 2 in in place of y, will I get a true statement or a not true statement? If it's a true statement, I want to shade inside. If it's not true, I want to shade on the outside. And we see here that uh, 1 minus 1, that's 0. Uh, that whole first term is just going to simplify down to 0. Same thing with the second term, negative 2 minus a negative 2. That's negative 2 plus 2. That's going to be 0. And so we do get a true statement, which means we want to shade on the inside of this. And this is good because then the region we want is an ellipse. We're not going to try and find the area, the infinite area outside of that. We want to find the area of that ellipse. And the area of an ellipse is a equals pi times a times b. And where a and b are the a and b of the uh, ellipse in standard form. So we have. Uh, the area is equal to pi, and sometimes a they use as the larger of the two. So 2 times the b is 1. Doesn't matter which one you put in here. Either way, we're going to end up with 2 pi for our answer. And it's 2 pi units. And they're square units. So we can put 2 pi square units. Let's just recap and make sure that we've completed everything we said we were going to. We identified the conic. We decided, we determined that it was an ellipse. And since it was an ellipse, we had to do completing the square to put that ellipse in standard form. We graphed the nonlinear inequality. And we determined that it was an ellipse. And then we found out what the area of that ellipse was using the formula a equals pi times a times B. Hope that helps. See ya.